Hey everyone, Keepers and Conjurers, welcome back to another live stream. We're going to go to a Pagan conference right now at one of our favorite meta Second Life places just to see what they have in store for a conversation. So let's get to it. And I'm going to like talk to like both like with them and with you guys on the sidebar so it might be a little bit confusing for you guys so let me know <laughs> that's aldrin right here this is his avatar i'm going to send you the uh next teleport when i get there okay okay all right, thank you. Can you shine my knob? Hello, hello. Where are you? Tag it. Hello, Al and Roy. I'll just call it, yeah. <laughs> Roy A. Countess. Good, that's good enough. A green countess. Your Grace. Isn't that what a countess gets called in England? Your Grace? No clue. Yeah. Well, we just had a question. Well, first off, uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Cinespell. Um, if you've not been here Hi. before, welcome. There you go. There's your voice. Oops. I apologize, everyone. Um, everyone's still <laughs> trying to load right now, and I haven't been on here for a while, so please bear with me. How's everyone doing? Good, how are you? Doing wonderful. Oh, thank, you well. thank you well. How are you, Countess? I am good. Okay, so what kind of table is this? Is this a round table or? Okay, so definitely Some not over there. Rectangle. Long, yeah, long rectangle. rectangle. Okay, that is the talking ball. So when you click on it, it basically says you have the floor to speak for uh, three more minutes. If you wish to uh, end your time before that, just click the ball again. It'll go either to nobody or to the next person in the queue. Yeah, Countess, you got the ball. The floor is yours. Oh, I do. do you know things are still yeah. loading <laughs> on, on here. Um, oh, yeah. I see it now. How's everyone doing? My name is Countess. I'm with Aldwin. And I am so excited to be here. Cool. That's outstanding. Nice to meet you. Yes, and welcome to Covenstead, Summer Isle. And um, if you would like to let go of the ball, I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, just yeah. click it again. Maybe twice, slowly. Otherwise, you'll there teleport you onto it. Oh, darn, our Gemini. We can't hear you. Um, well, anyway, welcome to Sita Spell. Um, yeah, you figured out how to talk. I'm your... Uh, discussion leader for the next 45 minutes uh, of our allotted time. My name is uh, Eric Lafav. I am a priest of the Karelian tradition in real, and I've been coming to Covenstead since before, since basically when it started. Ainsley started it a dozen or so years ago, right? But 16 years ago 16 years ago maybe it's been that long yeah i think it was around for about a year when i first arrived yeah that was back in the day <laughs> um julian just asked an interesting question because i was originally had a topic to talk about about psychic hygiene and the importance of it and the first question is well 
uh, how do you know when you're under attack psychically or emotion or you know which is out to get you so to speak so i'm going to click the ball and answer about what's going on with me right now and if anybody wants to speak after me just go ahead and click the ball and you'll be put into into the queue in order um like i said you know when four major negatives you know bad news appears in a few hours you know three deaths and one uh potential which of course luckily you know spoil alert she's fine today which is great but a brother a uh a partner and a grandson oh a grandchild oh i cannot imagine that losing a child losing a grandchild um so that's one thing on their facebook group they put up a uh, defense, basically how to defend against attack post. And I always say, if you're going to go on offense, the first thing you do is you shore up your defenses. Um, this is a group that we know has a, a grudge. They are very much uh, outspoken about, I don't know uh, what they're talking about but you know, their disdain for us on a personal level. Um... And it is personal. It's not philosophical, our differences. Um, so, you know, I mean, we all feel, we all believe in the same way. You know, we all think the same way. And it's just a question of like, oh, well, anyway, we're not lifting a finger to harm them. Nobody I know cares enough to do something about that it's personal to the yeah to individual leaders of the tradition um it was basically mommy and daddy had a fight and split up mommy went and took her ball and went home and daddy's going around going, all right whatever uh and then of course you know we all you know i'm with daddy some people went with mommy and um I never liked mommy in this case, but that's my personal story. Um, but yeah, they're, they're making these personal attacks and I, and they're proficient witches. So that's my answer, Julian. I think that they're capable of it. What's that means motive and opportunity is what they call it in, in uh, crime in police work. You know, do they have the means, motive, and opportunity to, to perpetuate uh, this attack? So that's how I think it happened. It's going on. Or that's why I think it's going on. They can, and shit's happening. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure that answers my question. But it does answer... Um, something important something that can you know you can use as something to be wary with uh, in other words it, it's something you know it's a it's a reason to watch out but all this bad news do you think that is the indication that you are under uh, an attack is that how you meant it yes because i don't believe in a coincidence you know um this sucks and um sorry do i press this circle <laughs> like when i want to talk next so yeah okay you know somebody once said i believe it was crowley who said that magic that we do is coincidence control we're controlling coincidences to occur so um i don't think somebody is sitting there going "Ooh, let's kill people i think just this massive wave of negative vitrality pressed 
our way, my way is an individual that's out in front. Um, they actually used a photograph of Sandra uh, in one of their posts saying, hey, look what they're doing. Um, you know, my beloved. Um, now, the bigger question is, uh, as our retired leader, Lord Don Lewis, said, um, y'all should always have your, you know, boundaries up. You should, you know, daily do your psychic and your spiritual uh, hygiene to make sure your wards are up in your house, your personal uh, boundaries, your, your aura is strong or acknowledge that your aura is strong. And uh, we have uh, an affirmation. There is one power in the universe and I am a perfect manifestation of that power. And as such, I will that the boundaries of my aura shall be strong and healthy, repelling all unwanted energy while remaining open to positive and healing energy. Safe within these boundaries, nothing can Are you there? You disappeared. Hello, Eric? Can anyone else hear me? Am I? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh -oh. Yes, I can hear you. Dear Eric, can you hear me? No. Yep, he's under psychic attack. All right. No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> he's got a techno demon on him. Run! No. Oh. <laughs> Are you there, Eric? Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry. Uh, now I forgot. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's lost. Okay. All right, I'll just drop the ball. Mm, I'll try to hang on to what I was going to say. Oh, oh. our Gemini went off. <laughs> and I hear your little doggy. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I just recycled uh, voice. I just recycled voice. Okay. Which is Are... funny because I was just talking about mm -hmm. being defensive, and then all of a sudden, my mic goes out. Yeah, well, you were unfortunately deaf to me. Um, I said, uh, yep, definitely. Eric's under a psychic attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, Maybe I'm cautious, maybe overly, um, I'm not sure. I don't quite agree that that adds up to you being under psychic attack. So then I think, all right, doesn't matter whether I agree or not. It's a matter of information. And that's pretty much what we're for. <laughs> At least that's one view of uh, common folk and, and uh, folk tradition and witchcraft and um, what good are we? Information is one, and especially in this day and age with technomancy being present okay. and imminent. Um, getting your information is a, uh, a good idea. Um, and I don't mean Google it. I mean work your information gathering, your divination, if you will, if you like that term. Um, I like it. And go from there. And I think it's the information, yeah, is power. Why? Because the, if you are under attack, if you find it, if you see it, then you can see more of it. Then you can defend yourself more against. But I like... Um, yeah, the idea that the 
I want to say consecration, but like self-dedication in not just a what you can do now, a, a single ritual or maybe a set of rituals, but um, or talismans that you can you can construct construction of of differences, but but also throughout your life with your life. Um, for example, the dedication of of yourself to to something. Oh, okay, I gotta shut up now. Please go on. I go definitely ahead, agree please. with um, Eric. Um, a lot of times, people. I like to call it sympathetic magic, whatever route that people put on you or people that you love. Um, I think that I, I agree with Eric completely, you know, setting up your wards, but also for those people who have like that spiritual block as well. Like um, sometimes we need instruments of divination to kind of give us like insight on what type of attack this is, you know, it's. I live a vampiric lifestyle, so for me, sometimes I may get defini- um, I may call up a friend and be like, "Hey, I need like a reading on what's going on with my keep. Uh, just like let me know what's going on because I can't see anything." And usually, they'll get back to me by saying, "Okay, well, you're under a psychic attack. There is a nexus forming due to the fact that people are, you know, under stress. There's." Uh, I hate to break it to a lot of people, like jealous people. There's jealous people everywhere that's, you know, going to send you shit that you really need to repel. So I say guard up. And the best time to do something is now, basically, when you are under psychic attack. Um, sometimes you don't have time to wait. So I feel as if you guys, whatever you guys learned, do everything you know if it's getting i don't know like red brick dust to uh guard off your your home or getting a, a a being to help ward off any evil spirits or any negative uh connection that you have with the caster or the sender um yeah i agree with eric completely on that well thank you countess um I don't know how far I went in my uh, present or my last share before my internet hooked up on me. Did y'all hear my uh, affirmation? Yes, it was quite good. Thank you. Okay, so th so you, it, that did go through. Uh, and maybe psychically, if you will, declaring that, you know, repelling all unwanted energies. Was that second life? Oh, no. Are you unwanted energies? Oh, hell no. You're very wanted energies. I love you guys. Go ahead. Karen. I actually didn't hear um, all of the the affirmation uh, and incantation. If you would love to do it again, that would be great. Yeah. I, I wanted to agree with Countess and you, Eric, of shoring up you know, your defenses, but, but also, yeah, the full affirmation it didn't make it all the way through so yeah i'd love to hear again um what that would be well very well there is one power in the universe and i am a perfect manifestation of that power as such i will that the boundaries of my aura shall be strong and healthy repelling all unwanted energy while remaining open positive and healing energy safe within these boundaries nothing can harm me for i am filled with the strength of the goddess by my will so mote it be bless it be um... but whatever i guess what i'd like you guys to take home is if you don't have a daily and yeah i do believe it's it should be daily um you know psychic if you will you want to call it psychic you want to call it energy you want to call it magic you want to call whatever you call what we do that's n not normal for the rest of the universe that makes us special the things that um whatever you call that making sure that 
conduit, be it yourself, be it your tools, be it your home, however you you discuss it, uh, should be psychically cleared and dusted off every day. Thank you. Julia. Yeah, and I'm going to add to that. Uh, okay, so there are the less mundane things, um, psychic, metaphysical, um, magical, whatever you want to call it. Um, must include everything else. So think holistically. If you don't want to be um, attacked, don't attack. Or you've joined the game of let's all attack each other. You know? So I, I, I think then that affirmation... Um, and things like that is like a concentration of your self of of proceeding along your path and uh, so even in the mundane ways um act with honor with people um if you want honesty then be honest, etc. You kind of get the gist of that, I think. Um, and I think a lot of, a lot of the, I wouldn't say a danger of an affirmation, is it can become rote. Um, make it rote and meaningless to you, then you kind of might lose your your consecration, your your oomph, your fire of really meaning it. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, just my uh, my advice to people thinking about that kind of thing. Of course, I, and I definitely agree on that as well. And a lot of people do affirmations off of routine as well. And kind of hung jury on um, that statement, uh, Julian, because a lot of people, they, they need routine in their life, especially in spiritual practices. Um, I know that for some of my clients who have ADD and ADHD, like they need to have like these um, sometimes meaningless affirmations uh, that have them going into their spiritual practice a little bit more um, if they recite it like uh, repetitively. And also, um, am I allowed to just ask like any questions and on this table at this table? Oh yeah, absolutely. All questions I welcome. Um, meaningless. Well, I mean, sometimes like it's an afterthought of like a lot of people, like what Julian says with like you know like um, affirmations, and sometimes these affirmations are just routine uh, to some of these people, uh, spiritual practitioners in general. Um, is everyone here um, a Wiccan or a witch or categorize himself in that in that uh, niche? Yeah, pretty much. Ballpark, Similar. Yeah. Not a Wiccan, but close enough. So I have a question for um, you guys. Like, what, what if you want to, like, test the waters in, you know, darker arts or in like dangerous territories what what if you are um a person who is uh i may i say revengeful because a person is sending you negative energies or some people may call it a root a hex a sympathetic magic or like we talked about before like what what if a protection doesn't work what if you actually have to go in for the jugular that's why I asked if you guys are like uh, Wiccans or um, followed that Rick and uh, Reed. And that's all. Mm, that's a great question. And man, that opens up so many others. I'm, I'm kind of happy I have the ball after. I'll let it go, let you guys, you guys think of your answers. But for me, not being Wiccan yet, very much have taken vows of harmlessness we can go into that that's maybe even a book but um 
being harmless um, also includes yourself as well. Uh, so if I am attacked, do I just let harm come to me? No. I have to include myself in this, um, at least in, in exactly self-defense. Or uh, let's say somebody comes to me and they're being attacked, and if I um, uh, agree that they are, then um, and I want and I agree to help, then I should also just not let harm happen either. Um, but then there is a, a a kind of defense that I use that I know at least Aidsley at one time has said um, it is a nasty kind of defense. And that is a turn back candle or um, a mirror box. She has a different conception of the mirror box than I do, but it is meant to reflect back what, what if like someone who might be there. doing ill or ill will um, meant for someone else for it to be returned back to them. And I think, <laughs> I think some... I agree, Aldwin, but not everybody does. And this is a good discussion. Um, is that doing harm to them? Mm. No, I think that lets them, though, see, this might be the controversial part, that lets them do harm to themselves. Is that good? Well, it's like um, asking for their karma to come home to them. And if they have agreed to attack, hmm, some of us might be thinking, well, they deserve it. Mm, is that harsh? Then there's other things like, um, okay, so my tradition comes up um, out of England and before that out of Wales. And way back in the day, necromancy was a thing. Um, I'm burying skulls, using the dead. That's, you know, I say dark history, but um, that's there and it's still kind of included. We have, we, we're pretty chthonic. Um, and that's very much throughout my tradition. But um, there's also questions of that as well. And it's not, you know, today, cool to compel, but it's there. I am a Wiccan. I am, a, like I mentioned, a priest of the Corellian tradition who says that, yes, do no harm, but you can do self-defense, as mentioned. And it is specifically talked about. Some, uh, my last tradition I was in was uh, our high priestess was fond of saying, do no harm, but take no shit. She's a New Yorker. And when I left, I took Sandra with me because, of course, she's loyal to me when they asked me to, uh, they, they informed me that I was no longer welcome there. I took her with me and they were really angry about that and vengeful. And, um, you know, I have a psychic camouflage. She's never fucked with me, but she's messed up. She's actually, uh, uh, Sandra's found a witch jar in her front yard. And she just picked it up and threw it in the, into the water, into the Kilvan, the, the, uh, the river uh, right there. Now, what that saying is, now the mirror box and, and what Julian was talking about, this reminds me of uh, Taekwondo when I studied martial arts. And part of that is you use the attacker's energy against them. You know, you don't have to expend a whole lot of energy to, to knock them on their ass. And um, so my point of view is, and um, I used to be a cop. I used to be a federal 
police uh, with the U.S. Coast Guard. I was a federal law enforcement officer. I had a gun on my hip, and I was trained on how to use it and what my, so to speak, rules of engagement were. Yeah, I was a Coastie. And I'm, I, what, I haven't touched a weapon since uh, 2000, and I have no intention of ever doing so again. But still, uh, you attack and you cause harm and uh, I will stop you. Now, this attack is ineffective. You know, well, is it? I don't know. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole again. We had that conversation. But to answer the Countess, I'm perfectly capable of doing dark magic. I've been trained in necromancy from the PGM, the magical Greek papyri. I know those spells. I choose not to do them. And that's a personal choice as a peacenik hippie tree hugger. Uh, but you come at me, I'll, I'll drop you. Well, I mean, going back to the original question, I mean, it's such a complicated issue. Um, you know, I used to use an example like uh, in Wicca, you're not supposed to do any harm, not supposed to mess with anyone's free will, and there's always the karmic uh, return. Um, but I've used this as an example many times. You know, what if somebody in your neighborhood is molesting children? Um, are you going to not mess with their free will? You know, no, you're going to do, do what you can to stop them. And if you have to suffer for it, well, you're ready to do that because it's more important. And I think a lot of times uh, the way to look at it is if it's something you would do in your physical life, why wouldn't you do it in your spiritual? Because pretty much everything we do in our physical life and in our spiritual life is manipulative in some way, shape, or form. Um, but it's also complicated when it comes to the person who may be sending you negative energy. Um, often they don't even know they're doing it. You know, think about that, that control freak narcissist who, you know, you're dating, who's telling you what to do and who you can talk to and you trying to control every part of your life. And when you walk away, that person's going to freak because the whole reason they're acting the way they do is they're terrified of abandonment. So they're, they're going to be lashing out. They're going to be sending you all sorts of garbage, but is knocking back at them going to help? No, because the whole root of their problem is their misery and making them more miserable is going to help you or them. Sometimes the best thing you can do for the person that that you want to get rid of is to, to do something positive, you know, send them positive energy so they can get on with their lives and leave you alone. Um, so it's, it's a very difficult and complicated situation. I can use another example. Um, one time, and I was working with a Norse guy at the time, um, we were getting some really nasty stuff coming our way. Uh, I kept Everybody told me it was a specific person. I kept saying, nah, she's too full of hot air to be, you know, of any real talent. But uh, we called up a Valkyrie. We made a convex mirror. We painted a glyph on it. Uh, we did all these heavy-duty rituals, and that woman ended up in the hospital, um, screaming that we were cursing her. She had no way of knowing what we were doing. We didn't tell anyone um, until way after the fact. Uh, but in that case, yeah, that's a mirror spell, and the mirror spells can be kind of rough. But our focus on that particular spell was make her back off it wasn't you know go after her job or her this or that it's just make her back off let her know where it's coming from and that's why we we figured that she had to be the one sending it to begin with um but so i mean you have to do what you need to do but in many times it's just such a complicated situation because every situation is different and i'm sorry for using the word situation three times in the same sentence but okay i can't think of what else i wanted to say so Passing the ball. You, you said something um, interesting about, say, the narcissist um, doing something to make him miserable. Uh, okay, so in spirit keeping, it's a little bit different. Uh, uh, I love the fact that you have an you know, open to make dialogue about this, but um, in, in that's this case, it's just a never little bit different. my intention in fact making somebody miserable is like what's it. wrong with the world so to speak so to speak um that is okay like that you know part. like like in stories stories tell us that um vengeance I... is not ever a good answer 
and it doesn't work. It doesn't work um, in changing the world. It doesn't work in changing you. True. Um, which, in a way, is the same thing. But um, so vengeance isn't a reason. I'm. I I would do something like a stop doing what you're doing, stop being nasty, um, to to actually enact a, a, something towards a, a good change. Um, yeah. Like, the, let's say, with a narcissist. Would that necessarily include making them miserable? No, that sounds like that would be counterproductive. So instead, the effects would be more complex and maybe hopefully um, more tutelary like uh, teaching them to help him out of that problem um, so it could be in its way good except that you are doing this against their will okay. or I despite guess. their will um, and that's a complex thing and that's why it's always a good conversation to, to talk about these kinds of things um, what is harm? What is hurt? What's the difference? And welcome back, Eric. Yeah, I think these are good things to contemplate that we should always do. And yeah, um, in the practical things that you can do, but as well as how you act in general. You. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it's talking. Trespassing. Oh, yeah, it's definitely trespassing. So I think Angela said something that did trigger us, us a memory for me. So with my response to things like this, I, for me, the person's intentions are, are very important for me because uh, with the way I, with the tradition that I follow, it's a shamanic based uh, system. I can rely on light spirits or I can rely on heavy dark spirits. So I don't want to send the heavy dark ones if they weren't trying to kill and things of that nature. So when something like this happens, I like to do a different types of divination and find out if there is a, a a need for me to be harmed in their eyes. If not, I'll send a lighter spirit that's looking more for discipline. But if it's something where I know that they, you know, we find out through investigation that, the, hey, this person's wishing bodily harm or bodily harm on someone that I love, okay, well, now we're going to go to the dark art spirits. Now we're going to send something heavy and something that will may may cause bloodshed it depends on what they were trying to do if anything got through if uh extended family were uh hurt that's when the darker spirits come out and that is because i'm trying to preserve uh, a type of karma for the afterlife like i don't want to like pop to the other side and then uh, have a situation where it's where it's you know i sent this dark being to someone who was just jealous you know i wanted to be you know this person uh have full on intention to to harm and perhaps they did or didn't get something through people are starting to get sick and that kind of thing where okay now there needs to be a a vengeful kind of thing so i do like try to like weigh it a bit right in my head and i think that comes from having a lot oh of gosh. respect for spirits that work with the dead a lot of psycho pumps i do uh try to follow some of the philosophies uh where it, it, the person's heart is kind of weighed I mean, like i kind of want to know like what were they trying to do before we craft a response Some really good points. 
Yeah, it looks like we lost Eric. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, no. Yeah, his internet is uh, pooping out. Yeah, you know, like you, you brought up here. a good point. Um, um, really good. Between light uh, and dark spirits, and I think his name so why one see. over the other? I, you got me thinking I about that. Why? But he has uh, really good Okay, so uh, one, points. say light spirits for corrective. Say, uh, take, for example, let's let's go um, monotheistic and say uh, angels and, and demons, right? Um, lots of concepts like that, but, you know, that's a pretty popular one. People get can wrap their heads around that pretty easy. Um and I think as occultists, though, we, we get more specific. Are you we the get audio and really detailed in the metaphysics of, of it all. Um, and, uh, and I think the common view is that, well, hell, I mean, angels can be really painful, um, massively destructive. <laughs> Maybe that's just going too biblical there. Rather, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of, say, um, speed or the heavy lifting or more earthbound stuff that you can get more from, say, a demon, they being closer to earth, more associated with earth, whereas angels are more concerned with uh, goodness and lightness oh my God, I was lying and, all this time. Um, and guidance and and that sort of thing maybe i'm not sure if i'm <laughs> getting anywhere near your conception of of how those things are but how how would would you all do and 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 everybody um do you have a concept like that and do you have then a preference uh do you um, give certain work to one and, and certain work to another Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, if it's discovered that the person was intending extreme bodily harm, if it was uh, murder that they're contemplating and things like that, I would go for a fallen angel. Like I literally will use a Kabbalistic magic and work with a fallen angel. Um, if it's someone that just has an ego problem and they need to be, a little, they need a little bit of discipline. Um, it'll be uh, something from that same pantheon, but it would be something that wouldn't be considered fallen yeah. yet. Um, and for people who are really, really like working in groups, it, it may be something from the Ars Goetta or something even older from Samaria. So it just depends on like, what are they doing and what kind of backup they have? Like, is there, is this an entire group? Is this an organization? Are, are we talking about like a well-established company because they have their own magic uh, that, that these people are using out there too, if you look into the conspiracy side of things. So it just, it's kind of about who are they? What kind of approach are they using? Who's protecting them do they have any have any have any affiliations with some of the same deities that i would work with like all that goes into it when crafting a response gotcha I a live stream on Twitch. Accident. Oh my God. anyone else and do you do you think in those terms do you um think in terms of uh in uh of, Incorporating spirits in work. Or are there other methods that you guys might use? Um, yeah, so Altman actually um, summed it up with what... Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, so Aldrin actually summed it up to um, what what we do. Yes, um, I do use uh, a lot of conjures from uh, from our keep, basically, to, to help guide our clients, um, help me with, like, divination and things of that nature. Um, but also, like, um, I use a lot of beings to actually, like, help out, like, people who are dealing with, like, like, personal problems because they may see that they might have like narcissistic tendencies and a ego problem and sometimes you kind of really need a darker being to kind of like put you in check saying you know you're not 
you're not top sh- sh- top shelf right now like like you know just just tone it down a little bit we kind of need these beings to kind of kind of realize into reality in ways uh because some people like when when we make friends i always tell my clients that your friends just want the best of you like they're not going to give you tips and tricks however a spirit is going to tell like tell you how like um how they see things because either they passed on and they're now your guides or your spiritual companion you know however you guys take it um and they're giving you guys like worldly advice from the beyond and shit i would rather take that advice than a friend that just is just an echo chamber uh and agrees with me all the time because that's what a friend does so spirits spiritual spirits uh can definitely help you guys anyone um and i feel like that's why we do divination too because we want insight from the beyond and of course we can all go to therapists but that's not what we want right like we we want advice from the other side so that's what i have that's my take on it uh hi i'm back and welcome back thank you welcome back uh the the loaded question which we don't have time to answer is what did i miss (laughs) um but what did i miss Uh, okay um let's see going back um yeah i think you okay what was the last thing you heard Uh, try to make a transition the last thing that I answered was um, utilizing spirits for, I think, um, just summing up, utilizing um, spirits and entities for your everyday practices. I think Julian mentioned, do we incorporate spirits in our spiritual path? Yeah, a question yes. for the table. Okay. Um, I'll take the ball. In my tradition, we invoke the god, the goddess, and the ancestors. Um, so what others may call spirits or ghosts or the dearly departed, those are our ancestors. And we're also aware that some ancestors have said, yeah, sure, I'll help out. And some have said, hey, leave me the fuck alone. You know, uh, and so you know who to call, so to speak. Uh, I personally haven't connected with any of the Karelian ancestors. I haven't made that personal connection. My spirits are more the uh, animal totems, the animal spirits from my Native American background, my Indian. Uh, Bear, dragon, uh, panther, or cat. Um, And today, somebody did a reading for me and pulled a animal spirit card for me and it was the chameleon chameleon Ooh, what a nut you know and it was like um act as if you know fake it till you make it as julian had said earlier so yes i absolutely work with spirits in various forms That's awesome. Um, so in this um circle, like we can ask like any question that pertains to neo paganism and paganism and uh, spiritual path, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. sure. So um for my question uh, for you, Eric, since you worked in law enforcement before, have you ever utilized? I don't know if you um you know grew up to, uh, with your uh, spiritual path, like you know at birth, and then you know you. I guess like following traditions from your family, but in the line of work, in the line of duty, like have you ever um, used your ancestors or beings for I don't know like protection, uh, you know, calling on I don't know like Poseidon or like a a siren being to kind of help aid you in the waters or something like that. Okay, and hit the ball. And hit the ball and answer your question in the affirmative absolutely um it's cool believe me when you're in the middle of a freaking uh hurricane okay let me tell you a little bit about myself then i was raised jewish and became and on my the day of my bar mitzvah 
on my 13th birthday, my mother said, you've done what the family wanted you to do. Now you do what you want to do and gave me my first deck of tarot cards. Is that tradition in that? No, oh, not okay. at all. Okay, that's why no, I was asking. not at all. <laughs> and uh, so I, because I, I was taught how to make the sounds, how to read Hebrew and to sound out Hebrew, but I was never taught the language. I was never taught the prayers. I just taught how to say, I just know how to say that. But I went and I looked at my, at the English translations and I said, you know, I don't agree with these. I don't agree with this relationship with divinity. And as my young daughter once told me, I think there's a boy God and a girl God. I just love her for doing that. That was so wonderful. Um, wow. So I always, I, I just didn't feel right with monotheism without divine feminism. And so uh, when I became aware of Wicca, um, it, it gave me all the English words to how I've been feeling all along. Now, I have used it in the line of duty. I have cast spell. I have done protection. When you're in the, you know, I was on the Coast Guard Cutter Tamaroa. You may know that name if you've read the book or seen the, and or seen the movie, The Perfect Storm. She was in the middle of that shit. Three storms coming together in the North Atlantic. Gnarly. Uh, when you're in that kind of stuff, because the TAM is, was the only cutter that the Coast Guard ever had that could have handled that kind of stuff. I've been in that. Um, you know, can you imagine 75 foot tall waves, which if you can imagine just 12 foot waves, that's twice your height of a, say an average person, six foot tall person. And that's your floor moving up that, and down that every 12 seconds. That's what it's like to be at sea sometimes. And you start getting, you know, it can be many stories going up and down. Yeah, you're calling on Poseidon. I definitely did. I had a thing called the sailor's prayer that I would say. Dead, yeah, our Gemini, you know what I'm talking about. Um, You know, and I'll put the ball again because no one else is talking. Uh, I would also say that uh, in search and rescue, I've reached out psychically to see if I can find the people we're looking for. And I've made a pretty decent guess. Was it a guess? Was it being a good witch? Who knows? That's a good answer. That's a good question, isn't it? So... Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Have ahead, you guys, Thomas. like, ever had uh, people who are in even, like, in the Wiccan community or in the pagan community, like, try to kind of, like, like correct you on your research or correct you on your path um and <laughs> yeah see um a lot of times too like i always ask um practitioners um like about this kind of things because a lot of <laughs> okay, yeah so a lot of times when um i I'm dealing with like people in like social media or because me and, and Alton have a spirit keeping YouTube channel and um, we always like deal with people who tend to be somewhat of like a historical freak when it comes to different religion, even my own religion um, and my shaman background as well uh, with Alton. They always um tend to always like correct and like, you know, like PC type of shit and sometimes 
we can't be you know uh like politically correct um because it's giving us a generalization generalization of that type of pantheon in, in a general description like when we read it textbook style right and then at times we go to different um specialists uh if it's going to be norse um the uh, pantheon or, or greek pantheon or if it's middle eastern or baltic um it seems like always someone wants to correct us when it comes to like research i'm sure that you guys dealt with it too obviously but what do you guys deal with those type of um people i always like would tell like my clients and the viewers like they probably have insecurity and narcissistic tendencies to just correct people like right away and a lot of times people are like oh is there a spiritual thing connected to it and i come to the con oh is that time up uh okay well i came to conclusion that um people uh know that people just like talking shit and they're using wicca as a nexus to make friends or as like the the topic of i'm going to enter um wicca because i have no friends they seem like they are into this uh, magic stuff that that I'm into. I'm gonna I'm gonna join them, and then in reality, they know nothing um, at all. And you know more. Indeed, like, indeed. Like we dealt with that a lot. So I just want to know what you guys, what how you guys deal with these narcissistic, egotistical, and I'm gonna say these assholes. Ignore them, and go pat yeah. them on the head, and go yes, dear. Uh, is my big yeah. answer, but to get <laughs> into the woods more about that, um, to, you know, trying to have sympathy for the human being, um, especially if you, like you said, you run a, a YouTube channel, if you're a spiritual leader, because that's what you are, you're a spiritual leader. Um, they come to you and this is your home, this is your house, so to speak, you know what I mean? Um that they come to to visit. You have the right to invite them to be happy elsewhere. Um, you can also see if they're open for education. Now, fundamentalists are all over the place and we've got them. What you described, Countess, is a fundamentalist going, hey, my way is the only way. So I have the right to correct you. Go, no, you're not doing it right. I believe at the heart of most fundamentalists, yeah, there's a few that truly believe their truth and say, this is the truth. I've seen it. I'm comfortable. Well, they're not comfortable with it. What I call it is, is the, the um, confidence of correct choice. That's what I have. I know I'm right for me and that's all i care about in other words what you do countess what you do all the way it don't matter to me i don't think about you guys you know what i'm saying i don't think about what you do when you're not here it's none of my business we're not friends you know what i mean you're not in my circle you're in my circle today and I'm really happy about that. And I'm enjoying the conversations we're having. When you leave, I'm not going to pay any attention to you. And I hope you don't pay any attention to me because it's none of your business what I do. It's none of my business what you do. So this person who thinks it's their business what you do can go kiss my ass. So how do I deal with it? Yes, it's kind of like um, there's that meme where it's a guru and, you know, the, the acolyte is there saying, um, what is the secret to happiness? And the guru says, don't argue with an idiot. And the acolyte says, I disagree. And the <laughs> guru says, you're right. The key is, is don't engage them in an argument. You know, the dude uh, uh, from, um, 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 you know, who, uh, um, Big Lebowski. Well, that's like your opinion, man. 
And that's how I, that's what I say. Well, that's just your opinion. Right. That's totally, I totally agree with you. Hey, Sandra, sorry. I, I didn't even see you like on the end of the table. Hi, Sandra. Well, yeah, she just, she just arrived. Hi, Sandra. Okay, I didn't Hello, want to be rude love. or anything. I was like, oh my gosh, sorry. I was like, y'all talking to her. No, 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 like, oh, I shoot. just got here. I literally just arrived, so you didn't <laughs> miss me. Yeah. Yes, this is the partner I had mentioned during the conversation today. Aww. My Sandra. Well, she looks lovely and sounds lovely. Yes, I definitely agree um, with that. The reason why I was asking that question is because um, you guys were um, saying when we came in, um, about protection and uh different negative um things that are being sent to to one another or even yourselves um sometimes in my opinion those are the people that are attacking you um and they they could be keyboard warriors um and they can just like follow your social or they can social media or they can come into second life and like you know make your life a living like 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 a living hell basically in your first life and second life um and that's why i'm like like asking that because a lot of people they they have i guess keyboard courage you know just to say whatever and then exactly griefers exactly um but then when something happens to them in real life you know they're not putting two and two together Yes, I'm sending um, things uh, to you because you're sending things that are sympathetic to me that I never asked for. I didn't ask for you to pray for me. If if you're gonna if if you're gonna pray to me, ask me first. You know what I mean. And if not, then I guess you're gonna have to, you know, deal with whatever repercussions that I have set in place. Hold like on a yours. second, Countess. Did you say pray to you or pray for you? Pray for and pray uh, to, in that in well. that terms, yeah. You are a god. You are a goddess, and of course, you know who wouldn't want to pray t to you. But I think pray for you is. <laughs> I would have somebody. So you want to pray to me? Well, you know. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's negotiate. Go right that ahead. Scene. I love it. I love that. Like, <laughs> yeah, be my echo chamber, of course. You know, but sometimes when 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 people are negative and then we're wondering too, as spirit practitioner, what the hell is happening in our lives right now? Well, it's probably the people who are doubting you who you are calling friends a, a friend who is doubting on your spiritual path doubting on your on your tarot cards doubting you know the the group that you have and and i see that a lot in sl too like a lot of people tend to think that um you know my way is the best way and and my belief is is, is stronger than your god um, or, or, or this group, you know, fuck y'all. And I'm like, okay, like you guys take this very, very seriously, even in, in the second life. That's all I have to say. <laughs> hmm. This is a weird question for me. I don't do community per se. This is it. The, uh, pretty much this, uh, this event these days, but here at, 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 at with Ainsley, um, with this group here at Covenstead, that's about as much as I care to uh, to do. I have, so okay, just mentioning that because I don't think in those terms of social media and uh, what people think. They can live, die, or grow mushrooms in their cracks. I don't care. It, I all I care about is. Okay, no, that's that's weird. I was going to say, all I care about is the craft. But in a poetic sense, that's it. Um, it if I'm finding that someone is a detractor for, of any level, whether it's uh, correcting me on you know um, a, a history as I've given it or a concept or... Um, my looks or the sound of my voice or <laughs> what I wear or the magic I do or how I see things. I, I'm, my first reaction is like the, the science of the science and art of magic. First, gathering information. So I'm listening to them and I'm wondering what it is they're doing. What is this correction? Are they actually concerned about how, 
I conceive of things, of what I wear and how I look, or anything like that. Um, what is their intention? So that's, so I guess I just always start with myself is really what I'm saying. When it comes to that stuff, to external, to you guys, to anyone else outside of here, um, I'm listening first, and I'm uh, gathering information and then form and then formulating questions. So I take a scientific approach, but then there's just you know, am I getting annoyed? Are they trying to poke me? It's like, all right, well that might be an indication of what they want. Maybe they just want to poke. Uh, maybe they just want to flex, you know. Um, then I'm bored. I'm probably wandering away, saying, oh, okay, bye. I'm not seeing it, you know. I, I am a polite guy. Um, I will smile and nod. When I don't care, I'll smile and nod. When I do care, I'll smile and nod. When I am interested, I'll show interest. And so that's how I approach all these things, um, those things that I, I'm not sure what your mission is in, in going to social media to um, communicate. Who knows? Maybe business. I, I don't know. And maybe you want to just live. Who knows? <laughs> well, we do it for a podcast, so. Well, yeah, <laughs> smiles and nods at Julia. <laughs> um, good, good. See what I did there? Okay. Um, it's back. <laughs> this goes back to, you know, when I fir we first, it was just Julian Ainsley and I, I talked about, Sandra knows about this. I talk about, I had an epiphany this week that my ministry is being the conduit. It's be being the messenger. It's very much, you know, Lord Hermes. I'm really going to be starting to take on Hermes as my patron now. Uh, we'll see where that goes. And I've already worked as a priest of Hermes back, but let me see. My professional website says the the tagline to it is fostering the mediums of communication. So social media is one of those mediums that uh, is very effective for getting whatever the message is out. So, you know, it's effective for that in this day and age. Um, I was very much involved with it before COVID, and now COVID just proved that this internet thing is going to stick around for a while, I think, you know. Um, remember when COVID hit, it was like, they want you to stay at home, uh, get your social interactions from the internet, and work through your computer. Hey, I've been doing that for 20 years. Um, so in that regards, and doing magic over this thing, my thing, we've showed we could do that remotely. We had, I, back 30 years ago, we did a ritual once over IRC and we had somebody in Michigan calling the North. I, you know, I was out West. I was in California calling the West. Somebody in the, in the right, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, somebody in the East and somebody in the South. Literally, we, thank you, Ainsley. All right, I'll, I'll sign back. In. Um, we'll, um, what's the word? Um, and we literally cast a circle around the country back 30 years ago. And we thought that was like, wow, cool. Now, you know, people do it on Zoom all the time. We just did a round of the Eleusinian Mysteries. Thank you, Julian. We just did a round of uh, Eleusinian Mysteries that was all on Zoom. Um, you know, we use the technology the communication technology available to us. You know, there was a time when, you know, writing letters, writing, you know, a printing press was magic. The radio, telephone, all these things are just new technologies to carry the message. Oh. 
I like that. Um, and Jillian too. Um, it's it's great to um, keep things very very sacred. Um, your your group uh, online group as well, and that's what a lot of uh, the people on on SL like ask because they come to me and they ask like, well, you know, this person is uh, I feel like this person is bullying me because they're teaching me about um, Hellenistic beliefs that is clearly not what I read or they're going into um, like Odinist like like people who who um, w um, want to worship Odin uh, they go to a different sim and it's totally d a different lifestyle and it's like oh like do you want textbook type of lifestyle or do you want people who say that you know like they're Odinist like aesthetically you know what I mean or and then when you kind of correct them it's more of like tit for tat or like kind of like ego measuring and 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 you know like they're not they're in second life for a reason which is to hang around you know people who have like minds uh, and the reason why I was asking is because I have like a lot of uh, friends who are in other I think sim it's called sim sims right uh, other worlds on um second life and they can't find a, a safe place to kind of like talk openly and get suggestions on, let's say I want to learn more about Baltic practices and learn more about these beings in, you know, Eastern Europe or in Russia or, or Siberia, or, you know, like these different places. And like, I really want them to come over here because there's like a lot of perspectives that they can like kind of like learn about you know if it's wicca they can talk to eric if it's um you know a little bit more um eclectic uh they can talk to julian because these people they they come to second life because they want to live and thrive and because in the real world is so harsh on them and when they come to second life they're having the same reactions the same personalities that they deal with like on on in a day to day basis in their mundane into SL, and um, that's why I was like kind of making like a comment too. Like, you know, I did a presentation on spirit keeping here last year, a couple of years ago. Uh, Ansley was hosting it actually at the the circle, and um, a lot of people felt as like we got a lot of like people like following us on our like profile on SL, and. They came to us saying, "Hey, you know, like we love Covenstead and we like your your presentation and everything." Um, I just really want to make it uh, like I really like what you guys are doing over here. By the way, I just, that's just just that's all. Thanks. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, I mean, I, I was speaking of um, of Covenstead as the the one kind of thing that I call community. Um, but I do none of my practice here. Every once in a while, I guess, we, we used to do rituals, but but my practice I keep here because why? Because uh, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, um, and unless people directly ask me, I don't talk about it. Um, it might come up in conversations like this, though, a pseudo spell where in my tradition, I'll preface every time people get tired of it, I'm sure. But um, I keep it super private. In my tradition, it's a, um, yeah, he prefaced. Uh, it's an oracular tradition. And so I don't really see things in terms of publication or getting out a message like you do, Eric, uh, of, of of that kind of thing, um, and I don't, I don't see a place for me in that, and that's just personal. I can't speak for everyone. I'm sorry. In my are you tradition. talking about social media? I'm so sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. No, 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 no. Please, yeah, go ahead. That's perfect to interrupt for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Social media, uh, witch talk, uh, YouTube, whatever, um, Facebook, uh, published, uh, published is published. Um, in the, into the public. It's not for the public. In fact, like I said, in my tradition, it's it's super rather private. And in fact, we don't think it works unless it's kind of a face-to-face -face kind of thing, or at least very personal. It could be online, but it's going to be at least intimate. It's going to be 
well, a, a, a teacher-student kind of affair. And a lot of people hate that nowadays. Gosh, I think I've most people are drawn to this, to modern-day witchcraft, paganism, um, for the freedom, for, for them to stand up and say whatever they feel. But, Eric, you mentioned the term fundamentalist. That is one thing that you don't, you can't get very strongly in um, paganism. Although people tend, uh, well, probably upbringing and culture, um, you just can't have that because we don't have a book. There is no source. So there's no way to be really fundamental in a thinking we rely completely on historical evidence. Um, but I think a lot of people don't want to because it also, we're doing this from the subjective point of view of occultists, where we include in our science the subjective. And that puts it out of the realm of, of you know, um, the normal kind of science, empirical science. Shut up now. Oh, um, I have nothing important to say. I just need to take the dog out. He's going crazy, and um, I think not taking him out would be a very bad decision. So I'll be back in 10 minutes. If you're all here, that's great. And if you're not, thank you for the very uh, cool conversation, everybody. And I'm so sorry Countess just uh, walked away. But maybe no, you'll still Aldwin be here. Did. Aldwin did. Countess oh, is still I'm, here. Uh, I, I did walk away. Um, uh, oh. Something was someone was knocking on the door. But yes, I'm still here. I heard oh, you were here. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, Aldwin walked away. Okay. Well, it's great seeing you guys. And um, hopefully you're here in 10 minutes. But the doggy definitely needs to go take a pee. Yeah, take her time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Welcome back. So I absolutely have experience with pagan, Wiccan, witch fundamentally. Oh my God, Sandra and I, we refer to this one individual as she who shall not be named. Um, and her book was the big blue book, you know, was Shea Wicca. Oh, uh, I see. And uh, uh, are yeah. you talking about the older or the younger? Morgana. Oh. 